after you've hooked up the camera, you're all set, you're going to download your uh, videos, this is the screen that comes up. And again, you're going to click on backup and go through that process. One thing that is very helpful is to go through the tutorial. It will connect you to the internet and discuss everything that just about I'm going to discuss here. So that's another option should you get stuck on any of this. All right, here's my basic procedure for uh, working with the uh, Avario camera. And that's going to include uh, downloading it and editing anything that you've filmed, any of the video. So the first thing I've done is uh, created a folder for my video files. So in this particular case, I'm going to go to my fish pictures and I'm going to go to uh, 2015 season. It's called Evario test file. And in it, are the videos that I took the other day. Right here and right here. And I can click on them there are all the files Now I can actually click on any of these files and they'll open up on Windows Media Player. Uh, so I can actually view any of them. Uh, the only problem with this though is that sometimes when I go to advance the video it'll freeze up. And when that happens, it, I've got to go through a whole process to reset it up. So I don't like to view the videos through this, though it can be done. So again, I can click on any of them, and they will come up in the Windows Media Player. It's another way to view them. But I can't do any editing here. So my editing has to be through the Avario program. Once you've downloaded your uh, video, you've backed it up, taken it off the camera, you're going to open your uh, power director. Now your power director may be a little bit different than uh, mine because I, I've since upgraded mine since I first got the camera. But uh, this is what basically what it should look like. Now they, for some reason, they give you these examples here. And... Uh, I don't like them at all. I wish they wouldn't be here, but so I'm just going to delete them, which I always do. And I'm going to go to File up here in the left-hand corner and click on it. And Import. And it's going to say Import what? Media Files or Media Folder. So I'm going to impart the whole folder. I'm going to go to my um, 2015 season. I'm going to go to Avario test file and I'm going to select that folder. Now the program downloads all of those videos that you just saw before. Now I'm going to immediately save it. So I go to File again, and I'm going to go to Save Project As. And I'm going to, again, I want to put it, keep it all together. I'm going to go to my Fish Pictures. 
and I'm going to go to the 2015 season and I'm going to go to a Vario test file and I'm going to call this uh, bill test for bill. And I'm going to save it. Everything is saved in the same folder. Now, the next time I open up the program, say I'm done for, for today, I'm going to close it. I'm done. So you basically set it up. You've worked on it a little bit. You've downloaded your videos. You've put them into the Power Director. Now it's maybe the next day or a couple of days later. Again, you're going to go to your Power Director. Open it up. Again, you're going to get this goofy screen. Delete it. Go to File up here and Open Project. Do I want to save the changes that I just deleted off of that? No, of course not. Not that stuff. Okay. And I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to go to my uh, fish pictures. I'm going to go to the 2015 season. Avario test file. Test for Bill. And it pulls everything up. So I'm set to go to work. Now, I'm not sure exactly sure what's on each video. So I want to go through it. But I want to go through it rather quickly. So all I have to do is click on a video. And it appears in the screen. And I'm going to hit play. Yeah, it's too, uh, uh. And I can click around. Okay. And I can see the whole thing. This is this goes really fast. This is this is a great little detail. Okay. And I can do that for each and every one. Click on it. And just go through it. Okay. Just like that, I'll do another one. Click on it. It appears in this screen. All right. So, this is a convenient way to quickly go through your videos to see what each segment contains and whether or not you want to keep it. So let's say I go back to the first one over here and I click on it and I realize I don't want it. I don't want it as part of the program. So I'm going to delete it and it is no longer part of this. Now it has deleted it off of this editing um, program, but it is still on your computer. So you don't have to worry about, whoops, I lost it. I deleted it and I lost it. No, I can go back to File, Import. This time I want to import just the file. So I'll go to Media Files. And it, the title of that one was 6A. There it is. It's still on my computer. I'm going to click on it. And it brings it back. So it's, I always have um, availability to that particular one. Uh, if I really want to delete it, then I have to go into the program, into the folder where I saved it all, and delete it out of that folder. But deleting it off of the uh, editing program just sends it back to the folder. All right. Now, the next step is that you want to begin editing. You want to cut down on these clips because you don't want a five-hour video. Uh, it's difficult to watch. So I'm going to take a file. I'm going to take this one that I started with, and I'm going to drag it down. And 
And now, here is where I actually begin editing. This is a clip. And I can play it as I did before and move around. And I find the parts that I, I want to save as part of the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to play it. And if you'll notice, once it's on clip, once you've highlighted clip, the clip that you're on will be highlighted in blue. If you go right next to the clip and it says movie, okay, it doesn't highlight it anymore. You can still edit it, or you can still view it, I should say, not edit it, but you can view it as a movie. But in the movie segment, you cannot edit it. The only time you can edit this clip is when you're in the clip itself. So let's say I want to get rid of part of this. I've watched it for a while. I realize, you know what? I want to cut it off right here. I'm going to click on it. It moves the cursor. And on that clip, it also has a bunch of subtitles. Okay, split, modify, trim, multi-trim, enhance, power tools, edit audio. You may not have all of these, but you will have like split. At least you'll have split, maybe modify, and trim. When you do trim, you'll get some kind of a box that says, okay, we'll set the time, trim it here, and then this is where it goes in, this is where the trim begins, this is where it ends. This got to be too complicated for me. All right, I'm clicking up and down, I didn't like it. So instead of doing that, I just go to split. So I don't, I don't use it anymore. I found out that it's easier for me to just go to split wherever I want it, cut it. So wherever I move the cursor, I've got this line that comes down. Wherever it is. And then I just go to split. Now this section over here, there's been a split in here. Now this section here, I don't want. So I'm going to click on it. It's blue. And now I'm going to delete it. It is now deleted from this particular clip. The whole clip is still up here. So if I make a mistake, I could just go back and start all over again. But from this clip that's going to be part of the program, I have edited it out. Now, say I want to get to the particular second that it's at. So I'm going to do clip again, highlights it, and I'm going to move over here, and I find that well, you know what? That's not the exact spot. Well, you've got a couple of arrows down here. And by clicking on them, I'm moving it, and I can get to literally a tenth of a second to where I'm at. And I can see it over here on this. I can literally get to a tenth of a second as to where I want to be. And again, okay, I'm, that's where I want it. Clip. Split it. I now have two segments. This first segment here that is now going to the gray, I don't want it. I'm going to click on it. It's highlighted. Now I'm going to delete it. Now whenever I do this, whenever I make a change, I always want to save it. So you can go up there and you can go to File and go to Save, and it saves it. Or you can simply hit Control S, and it does the same thing, and I've saved it. Now, 
let's pick another segment. I want to add on to this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to drag it over. Take it and drag it and attach it to that one. Now I have a new clip. All right. And again, so I brought it down here. I want to save it. Okay, I want to save that thing. I want to make sure because I don't want to go through this whole process again if the computer um, freezes up or something. And it has happened for me. So I've got it there. And here's my new segment. And I realize in my new segment, um, this is the part that I want. This is the part I want, right there, okay? I'm on the clip. I don't want this first part here. I don't want this section. So I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna go back and click on that section where I just split that I don't want. It's hi highlighted, delete it, save the whole thing. That's the basic process of editing. You want to drag a clip down, put it in the program, put it in your movie. I want to get rid of it. I split it. I don't want this section here. Click on it. Delete it. Save. I want to view the whole movie. If I hit stop, it's going to go all the way back to the beginning. And then I play it. So that is the editing process. And you would go through every single clip. And I won't do that right here. Now there's one kind of neat feature that I like about, uh, about this. Um, say that you want to um, collect or get a snapshot of one single frame. Maybe it's one where you're holding the fish. So uh, on this particular program, it's got a little picture of a camera here. And it's going to take a picture of this particular scene. If I want to move the scene I can pause it or I can use these little buttons to get even closer and I can take a snapshot of it and the snapshot is listed as snapshot zero and it tells you where it saves it in this particular case it saves it in drive D okay click on OK it has taken a picture and it puts the picture in your file so I'm going to click Save. I now have that picture. If I want to put that picture into the final product, I'll slide it down here. Okay. And I'll play it as if it was a movie. And now I have a picture. Once you have the clips arranged in the particular order that you want them and you've edited them and you've added any pictures, the next thing you want to do is produce your video. So you go up to the top where it says produce. Click on that and you get a brand new screen. And you have a, a number of choices that this file, this video, uh, can be put in, a format that it can be put in. I use AVI, and I'm not exactly sure why I use a AVI. Um, it's been so long since I've been doing it. But anyway, I do AVI, and uh, that's the format I want it to be in. Now, before I start, in this area over here, it says output folder. This is where it's going to take the file and put it. In this particular case, it says D produce one 
AVI, but I don't really want it there. So I'm going to click over here and it's going to give me some choices. I'm going to go to my computer again and I'm going to go and find my Jim Duplex Fish Pictures 2015 season. Avario test file. Click on that. And I'm gonna, it's gonna ask me, what do I want to name it? I could just name it Produce One or Produce Zero or whatever, but I'm just gonna call it Avario Test. Okay, and it's gonna save it as an AVI, and I'm just gonna click Save. And there it is. The output folder, it's going to go to my folder where I have everything else. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click Start. And it will now produce the video. Once your video has been produced, you'll get this screen and it'll say back to the edit page. Before I go to the edit page, I'm going to save it. And then I'll go back to the edit page. And just to be sure that I saved it, I'll click save again. And up here it says Evario Test AVI. It has produced it and it put it with all the other uh, clips for this uh, video, except this is no longer a clip. It is the video. So I'm going to click on it and play it. And there's my video. But I'm still not done. Because of the Avario setup, I need to um, I, I need to do one more step. So I'm going to close out of the program, and I am going to open up Windows Movie Maker. Recognize that guy? Well, that's from the last video that I made. But uh, I'm not going to use this video, so I'm going to click it. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to go to, on the left-hand side here, it says Videos. I'm going to click on Videos. And again, it's going to give me my computer settings. I'm going to go to 2015 Season. I'm going to go to Avario Test File. And there's my Vario Test AVI, and I'm going to click on it. Now it's put it in Windows Movie Maker. I'm going to save it. Go to File, Save Project as. Again, I want to make sure I put it in the right place. Test for Bill, I'll call it. And I've saved it. All right. Now, here's the whole video. If I just want to view it, I can click on it here. Because I put it here, it's going to be in the window. So I click on it there. And I can fast forward it. The whole thing. There we go. Good. Now I want to produce this movie now or I want to publish this movie, that's what Windows Movie Maker calls it. I want to publish this, mo this uh, uh, video so I can put it on YouTube. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag it down, just like I did the individual clips from uh, the Avario Edit Program. I'm going to drag it down here. And now I can do similar things to it that I did with uh, the Avario Program. Uh, if, for example, I wanted to edit it, um, 
I can put the cursor there. Uh, there's an, an area over here that's a split. I could actually split it and delete any area that I felt maybe I missed in the editing process, but no, it's all good. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to put in the title of this. So I'm going to go up here on the left-hand side again, it says Titles and Credits. Click on it. And it says, do you want the title at the beginning, before a selected clip, title on the clip, or credits at the end? Uh, I'm going to put a title before the selected clip. I'm going to click, uh, clip on that. That's what I usually do. Okay, And I'm going to call this one Test for Mr. Bill. All right, I'm going to add that. And where it says add, there it is, Test for Mr. Bill. Click on it. And it automatically puts it at the beginning of the video. And I want to play the video just to see how it is. Test for Mr. Bill. There we go. Now, I'm into the video itself, and I want to put uh, a caption in there, all right? So I'm going to go back to Titles and Credits. Title, instead of title before the selected clip, I want title on the selected click, clip. So if I clip once, I've got two lines. The top line fills the whole screen. If I click on the bottom, it will put a caption just at the bottom of the screen. So at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to put casting for the big ones. All right. And I'm going to put add it. It has put it down here. Okay. Casting for the big ones. Now that went by so quickly that maybe, you know, maybe I want that to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to go down here where it says, where, it, it, where, where I uh, inserted it, and I'm going to click on it, and it's going to give me a red arrow. And by just dragging that red arrow on the end, I can make it longer. So when I play it, The whole thing. I just land. Okay? Casting for the big ones. Alright? And again, I want to put something on, but this is a more important thing that I want to put on that I want to emphasize. So, titles and credits, title on the selected clip, and I'm going to leave it on there, on the top line. And I'm going to go Casting, but not catching. And add it. I want to make it longer. I'm going to go down here, click on it. There we go. Make it long. There we go. All right, so that's pretty simple on that. Again, when I want to add something, click on Titles and Credits. Where do I want it? At the beginning, before, on, or credits at the end? I basically just use before and on on all of mine. We're at the end of the video. I want to go to the end of the video. I can either click down here, maybe I'll do that. Click down here, or I can click over here. Either one will take me to where I want to be. And then I'm going to uh, just put on an ending. Again, titles on the credits. I always like to thank Buck. So I'll put, thank you, Buck Perry. And I'll add it, check to see if it's okay. I 
and that's it. Your movie has been made on Windows Movie Maker, but you still have a couple of other steps. And the next step is to publish your movie. So I'm going to go up here to the top of the screen, click on Publish Movie, and another box comes up. I want to publish it to this computer, so I'm going to go Next. And the title of it will be Using the Evario Editing Program. And where am I going to save it? Into my Evario test file. Same one I've been using this entire program. I'm going to click Next. Choose the setting for your movie. Now they give you a basic setting, but I want to go to more settings. This one seems to be worked better for me. And I'm going to go to Windows Media HD 1080p 7.8 millibits per second. Got it. And then I'm going to go to Publish. Click on that, and it will publish your movie. Now, when it's all finished, a screen will come up and say that your movie has been published. If you want to see the movie right away, you can click Finish, and your movie will come up on a separate screen. That's the entire process. One more step. I'm going to close out of Windows Media Player. I'm going to make sure that I save this back in Windows Movie Maker. And I now have a finished product. I can just watch it on my computer or the next step is to upload it to YouTube. You must register on YouTube before you can upload a video, but that's a very simple process. So once you do that, you're going to select the file and then you are going to simply upload it. And depending on your internet speed, it'll take um, just a little bit of time. I find it easier to go to the public library and upload my videos. I put them on a uh, portable uh, drive and take it to the library and upload from there. The libraries have the, the fastest upload capability, so it's no problem at all. So that's it. I'm looking forward to seeing your video.